On today's video, we're talking about how to create a no budget horror short with your iPhone. And that starts right now. Hello everyone, Ryan Camp here. Thank you so much for joining me today. This channel is all about learning and growing as a filmmaker. So please like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and let's become better filmmakers together. Today we are talking about a new horror short that I put together for the channel to celebrate Halloween over the past week called 2AM. I shot this thing with my iPhone, very limited gear, um, next to no budget, and it was just me and my wife uh, that recorded this thing and put it together. Uh, so today I'm gonna walk through um, everything that we did to create the film, hopefully give you guys some inspiration with what you can do with limited gear and your mobile phone. And today you will notice that I am coming at you broadcast style. Now we are not live, this is pre-recorded, but this is a really quick way for me to record content for you guys without having to set up a lot of gear. Everything's just right here, I hit record and we go. And to be quite honest, my life is absolutely insane right now. We have the holidays coming up, family visiting soon. Um, I've had about three close family friends pass away this last week. So things have just been really hectic around here. And this is a really easy way for me to create content for you guys when I'm busy. So hopefully you guys um, enjoy this video. And if you do, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends on social media. So let's get started with the basics. Uh, 2 a.m. is a horror short that I put together with just me and my wife, some limited gear, basically no budget, and we put it together in a, about a couple of days to help celebrate the Halloween season. Many of you may know that I am currently shooting a black and white film noir style film called uh, The Trinity. It's currently in production. Uh, it's been taking up a lot of my time. It's uh, probably the most uh, ambitious thing I've ever done for sure uh, here on the channel. Uh, lots of set design, lots of costumes, uh, lots of dialogue. Uh, so it's been a little bit of a challenge uh, getting everything right. It's going to have lots of VFX too. So I had to push back the release date for that. And we decided to release this short little horror film uh, in the meantime, uh, just as something fun to do for the channel. The idea for this short film actually came from one night I was, we have a driveway alarm and one night I was awoken in the middle of the night around close to 2 a.m. Uh, by a group of deer wandering through the yard. And um, I don't know if you've ever been woken up abruptly in the middle of the night. Most of you probably have, but it's just one of the most uh, terrifying and settling things because you're so vulnerable while you're laying in bed and um, just, you know, strange sounds uh, abrupt sounds that wake you up in the middle of the night. It's just really terrifying. So I started to think about an idea for a short film about someone who was woken up, awoken in the middle of the night by something loud or uh, something unsettling. So that was the basic idea of this film. And I started thinking about how I could show off uh, what time of night this was. And we really don't have alarm clocks anymore. And I remembered uh, when I was young, we had these retro looking alarm clocks. Uh, just about everybody had one. I actually have it right here. So I started looking around on eBay for a retro alarm clock like this so I could show the audience what time of the night this was without using like a cell phone or something. Um, so using that clock uh, in my mind, the time period for the film kind of went back to like, you know, 80s, 90s, somewhere in that area. <laughs> So I decided to actually get a um, rotary telephone also to be in the film. Um, ordered both of those things off of eBay. Uh, probably spent maybe 50 bucks on both of those. And that was pretty much it for props uh, for the film. Um, actually, I'm thinking about doing a giveaway if anyone is interested in winning this clock uh, for themselves. Uh, let me know. Maybe we'll do a giveaway and give that away to you guys, like some film memorabilia kind of stuff. So like I said, it, it took two days to shoot this thing. We shot this thing two days total, edited it two days total for everything. Um, I think the main thing I focused on for this film was getting the lighting uh, right in my mind. Uh, if you remember my previous video right before I released this film was on how to make a DIY cookie for film film noir shadows, which I'm actually going to be using in the Trinity also. 
uh, kind of a Venetian blind style thing that you put in front of your lights. If you haven't seen that video yet, please go check it out. I used this setup with one Godox light, probably in every shot in the film. Uh, so it was very handy and I was really pleased with how it came out. And if you've ever tried to shoot uh, something with your mobile phone, you know that it doesn't perform that well in low light. So getting the light right was quite a challenge. Um, I had to use a lot more light than I really wanted to, uh, almost to the point where I was blowing out my shots and then, you know, dialing it down almost to the point to where, you know, it's just a little bit overexposed, but not quite. I got it right there to the edge. Uh, otherwise I was getting a lot of noise in my shots and I still had a little bit of color banding and noise in some of the shots. If I had more time, uh, to go back and, and reshoot some stuff, I probably would have. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it looked, and uh, I thought that the DIY cookie that I use in a lot of the shots actually performed very well. I was really pleased with how a lot of those shadows turned out in the shots, and I think that's probably the standout um, aspect of this film, actually. So after I purchased my clock and the phone, I knew I had my set pieces for the film, so to speak. Um, I started writing down the shot list. Uh, the story is really bare bones. Uh, you know, a couple gets awoken in the middle of the night. Uh, by the loud phone ringing. Um, if you grew up in a time where these kinds of rotary phones or, you know, just landline phones were used, oh, man, I hate the sound of these things. I did, every time a phone would ring, it would just grate my nerves. Uh, and um, I'm so glad that we have cell phones now that we can put on silent and we don't have to hear the phone ringing uh, because I really hate that sound. So I thought that was a really scary sound to wake up to. And uh, speaking of sound, I know that I, if, if you watch a lot of my content, you see that a lot of my videos, I'm pushing epidemic sound and I'm not just blowing smoke. Epidemic sound is one of the greatest tools that I've ever used as a video or content creator or filmmaker. Um, I probably used about a hundred sound effects from epidemic sound in this short film. Their library of sound effects is just incredible. Uh, footsteps, uh, low drones, you know, horror music, anything you could possibly think of bumping into a wall, a thud, um, creaking stairs, uh, the rotary phone sound, um, crickets. I used so many sound effects in this film. It would be half the film that it is if I didn't have access to epidemic sound. And if you want to try those guys out, you can, Follow the link in the description below and you'll get a free 30-day trial to check it out and you're supporting the channel. And like I said, I'm not just blowing smoke. It is an incredible service and I highly recommend if you're serious about making films or videos, I would definitely sign up for Epidemic Sound and check out their audio library because it is, mm, man, it's magnificent. I shot this on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. I don't have the 13 yet. Uh, hopefully I'll be getting that soon and we'll do another short film with the 13. I'm um, always just like usually a step behind. I actually got the 12 pro max when it first came out. These YouTubers and stuff that constantly get the newest phone. I don't know how you guys do it. I just, I just can't afford to do it, but I shot this with an iPhone 12 pro max. I'm very familiar with its capabilities and what it's, you know, what its limitations are. Uh, I used the Filmic Pro app, which, you know, is my favorite uh, video creation app for the iPhone. I uh, shot this thing in Log uh, V2, and I color graded it with uh, my Horror LUTs pack. Uh, if you're interested in picking that up and checking it out for yourself, it's in the digital store. That's also in the description below. I shot this with the Moondog Labs anamorphic lens. I absolutely adore this lens. I think it's, uh, you know, it's probably one of the... it's it's one of the best lenses you can get for your iPhone it has the bayonet mount. I mounted it on my, it actually works with my moment case that I have on my phone. I used a Ulanzi phone cage to rig everything, put my mic on there. I used a Rode, um, video mic pro on top of the rig. And like I said, I used one Godox SL 60, uh, light with the DIY cookie that I made to create those film noir shadows on many of the scenes. And I use that in just about every single scene, just that one single light. I thought it did a great job of illuminating all the scenes and creating some interesting shadows. So let's go ahead and walk through the shots of this film and we'll talk about each one. We'll go ahead and play the video here on the screen so you guys can check it out. 
here we have this exterior shot. Uh, this is actually a family member's house exterior. They allowed me to come shoot. I knew that they had, um, I've used my, the house, my exterior, of my house, and uh, lots of my films. I just wanted to try something different. And I knew that this house had exterior lights, some arc sodium lights that were set up by the power company outside. So I knew it'd be a lot easier to get shots of the exterior at night because I knew I was going to lead, need a lot of light since I was shooting with my iPhone. So I uh, opted to go with this. Uh, we shot the rest of the film inside my home. Okay, this next shot here is the retro clock that I purchased. Started off on the time of 159, slow uh, post processing uh, zoom in here, motion with the shot as it switches to two, added that thud, that shocking uh, sound. And here we have the, um, the telephone ringing as it's waking me up. I'm laying here in bed. You can see some of the subtle shadows created by the DIY cookie here and the one Godox light. You can see it on this shot as well. Now, the actual while I was filming this, I actually didn't know how I was going to end it. Um, this was guerrilla filmmaking. I knew that I was going to be awoken by the phone ringing. I was going to answer it and hear a strange voice. I didn't know what the voice was going to say. Here in this shot here, you can see as I bump into the wall. Um, that t-shirt, if anybody knows what that t-shirt means, let, let me know in the comments below. It's kind of an inside joke. You'll notice that the phone has some weird markings on it. And if you look closely, it has some tape on it. I actually um, was going to use this phone in a different film. So I started kind of prepping it for that film. That's why it has the number six on it and some, some uh, weathered tear on there. Um, but I actually haven't shot that film yet. So that's why it kind of has those weird markings on it. But like I said, I didn't know what the voice was going to be saying. I knew I was going to hear some static. So I got some shots here, some close-up shots of me reacting to the voice on the other end of the line. And while I was filming this scene, I thought it would be really creepy if the voice told me that it was inside my house. Uh, so that's what prompted the character to start looking around the house um, for whoever this was, just to make sure, you know, it wasn't just, a, you know, it's more than a prank and, you know, there's not someone actually hiding in his house, which most sane people would probably do, I think. This shot right here was actually the most difficult for me to film. Uh, my wife is actually manning the camera here because I wanted to have the camera follow me as I walked into the other room. And this is probably the only scene in the film that was actually cut down a little bit. Uh, it was really long. Um, after I walk out of the bathroom here, I start to go into the next room and she actually followed me with the camera into our dining room where I peered out of the um, blinds in our dining room. Uh, the plan was was to have the monster or ghost revealed here in this scene. When I walk into the dining room, we wanted to have kind of a creepy, smiling silhouette in the corner behind me watching me. But it was proving to be really difficult to uh, do the VFX for that shot. It was going to take a lot of time which was something I didn't have because I was shooting this and editing it in two days. So I decided to cut that uh, for the sake of time. And I, I actually think it ended up being better for the film because um, we don't get the reveal of the ghost until the end. And I think that has a lot more impact. Um, as I was fleshing this thing out and shooting it, uh, it became apparent that the creature on the other end of the line was some sort of electricity uh, static based entity. So with that in mind, I started formulating what I wanted this creature to look like. Here we go into the next shot. I go back into the bedroom uh, where my wife is sleeping, who spoke to me earlier in the uh, first couple of scenes. Check the bathroom. And then here I am looking, um, getting ready to get into the bed and I hear that static Again, if you listen really closely, uh, coming from under the bed. I really like this shot. I like the sound of the wind as I'm looking under there. It kind of makes it seem like I'm peering into some other place. The final two shots of the film here. Um, this shot where I'm getting in bed, the way I had to pull this off, is, if you notice a little dip in quality here with the, the, the focus, 
I had to zoom in really close on my face. I had to go ahead and get my wife, who was wearing a full body morph, black morph suit. She's wearing that. She's sitting up in the bed beside of me. But I had to go ahead and get that entire shot, her in the shot and me in the shot, if that makes sense. And I zoomed in really close on my face. That way, when the reveal came, I could go ahead and just, in post-production, zoom the camera over to her face really quick for that shocking reveal at the end. Since both of us were going to be in the shot, I didn't really, I didn't really want to have to do any extra VFX. I wanted it to be as practical as possible because I knew I was going to have to do VFX on her face, um, and I did not know how long that was going to take. So I wanted to make it as easy on myself as possible. So I got both of us in the shot and then in post-production zoomed in closely on my face. So when the reveal happens, I could just whip the camera using some position and keyframes. I really like this last shot here of my wife as she's standing in the doorway with the silhouette. I thought that turned out really great as I realized there's something beside of me. And then we have the shocking uh, conclusion as he realizes he's sitting in bed with some sort of demon from another dimension. This was the first time that I've ever tried a jump scare like this. I usually don't like jump scares that much. I like uh, I like to create a feeling of tension and mood in my films, just unsettling feelings. That's how I usually prefer my horror. Almost like your soul's been stripped from your body and wrung out. That's what I like to go for when I go for horror. Not normally jump scares, but I figured this time I would try my hand at something different. Yeah, I've had a lot of people tell me that they thought it was uh, it was effective, so that's good to hear. Uh, for the face, I just took some uh, just uh, just a mishmash of different eyes and um, actually some dental, um, some pictures of some dental work uh, to get that mouth, and I skewed it in Photoshop. Uh, to make it look like it's like a huge abnormal grin. And then I put it on my timeline in the correct space, had to do a little keyframe magic to get it uh, to move with the camera. Uh, so it ended up in the right spot. Then I used turbulent displace on the face to kind of make it morph and move around a little bit uh, after we see it. It's, it's just on the screen for a very short period of time. Uh, but, you know, and then for the eyes, I cut out the eyes with a mask and behind them I put some broadcast static from a television behind that. It's really hard to see, but I think it just added just enough to give it that, you know, more more of a realistic look because, you know, when you're just dealing with images, you want to give them a little bit of life so they're not so static, uh, no pun intended. And then for the vi very final thing, you know, the, the camera flashes. I did all of that in post-production, the, the bright lights. The horror sets in for our main character that something has happened and he's being either attacked or, you know, we don't know what happens. But uh, the bright flashing, I did that in post-production as well. That is not practical. I just, uh, you know, increased the exposure for a couple of keyframes and, and brightened the scene up. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, that is 2 a.m., uh, shot it just me and my wife two days to shoot and edit before Halloween. The story was inspired by me being awoken late at night and then further inspired by uh, a retro clock, uh, which I purchased on eBay. Um, shot it with my iPhone 12 Pro Max, uh, the Moondog Labs anamorphic lens, the Ulanzi phone cage, one Godox SL60 light and my DIY cookie, which you can watch a video on to see how I created it and make one for yourself. If you like the way the lighting looked in this film, it will help you achieve that look. And uh, big special thanks to Epidemic Sound and Filmic Pro for providing me the tools to take this thing to the next level. And a big special thanks to you guys, man. You guys are awesome. Thank you for everyone that tuned in to the live premiere. If you haven't seen the film yet, please go watch it over and over again and share it with your friends on social media. Now, this video will be going up early for our channel members. Special thanks to our newest channel members, David Coles, Clive Bishop, and Paul Kane, who has been a member for eight months. Thank you guys so much for your support. I really appreciate it. If you're interested in becoming a channel member so you can watch videos like this a little bit earlier than everyone else and get access to exclusive discounts and content, 
please just click the join button at the channel header and find out how you can become a channel member yourself. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it inspired you and I hope that you learned a little something. I know that I learned something creating it. Uh, it was a lot of first for me in a lot of ways. Thank you guys so much for coming along on this filmmaking journey with me. I am Ryan and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>